In this video, I want to take a look into something called the crop factor. What is it? How does it affect our images? What are the pros and cons of the crop factor? All this and more coming up. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post weekly photography tutorials where I share tips and tricks and occasionally do gear reviews as well. So if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you want to learn how to get more from your digital camera. Now this week's video is all about something called the crop factor and it's important to understand the basics of the crop factor because it's likely going to affect every single image you take. Now understanding the crop factor may be particularly important if you're thinking of buying a new camera or maybe upgrading. Now the crop factor is determined by the size of the sensor inside a camera and it's important to understand the basics because it will affect three key things. One, image quality. Number two, the performance of the camera in low light conditions. And number three, the crop factor is likely to have an impact and determine the focal length of the lens that you're using on the camera. Now, before I get into talking about different sensor sizes and different crop factors, let's just remind ourselves of what cropping actually is and how it affects our images. This is an important step in understanding the crop factor. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using software like Photoshop or your smartphone to crop an image, the result is exactly the same. Compare the images side by side and cropping effectively makes the subject appear closer. With the crop factor, the image is also cropped, only this time the amount of crop is determined by the size of the sensor. Now sensor sizes do vary depending on the camera you're using. Let's start with what is commonly called a full frame sensor. The dimensions of this sensor are based on the size of 35 millimeter film. Here is a full frame sensor taken from a Nikon D850. The dimensions of this sensor match those of an image captured with a traditional film camera. For that reason, full frame is sometimes referred to as the 35 millimeter equivalent. Any sensor that is smaller in size is called a cropped sensor, and the most popular is the APS-C sensor. Canon use a slightly smaller APS-C sensor, and smaller again is the Micro Four Thirds system used by Olympus and Panasonic. And of course, bridge cameras, compact cameras, and smartphones have the smallest sensors. So now we know there are different sensor sizes, where does the crop factor fit into all this? When taking a photo, light passes through the lens and is recorded by the sensor. A circular image is projected upside down onto the sensor. The image is then flipped and displayed correctly on the LCD screen. Now, of course, with a smaller sensor, less of the image can now be recorded. So the image is effectively cropped in camera. So because there are a range of different sensor sizes, there are going to be different crop factors. Let's take a look at some of the most common. Based on the dimensions of 35 mm film, a full frame sensor is the standard and is therefore given a crop factor of one. Most cameras use the popular APS-C size sensor. This is given a crop factor of 1.5, with the exception of Canon, whose crop factor is 1.6. Panasonic and Olympus use the Micro Four Thirds system. This has a crop factor of 2. And if you're not sure what the crop factor is for your camera, you can check out the Photogenius website for more info. Alternatively, just ask your local camera store or check your camera's manual for more info. Okay, so now we've got a range of different cameras that have different size sensors, which in turn means different size crop factors. How does this affect our photography? Let me show you. This first image was taken with the full frame Nikon Z6 and the lens set to its maximum focal length of 200 millimeters. Now here's exactly the same subject, also shot at the same focal length, but this time with the Nikon D3500. And as you can see, the boats appear much closer. Now what I think is really interesting here is both images were shot with the same telephoto lens, but I was able to get much closer with the cheaper Nikon D3500 than I was with the much more expensive Nikon Z6. How much closer? 
can be calculated using the crop factor. With the Nikon Z6 or any full frame camera, the crop factor is one. So one times 200 millimeters equals 200 millimeters. This means the crop factor has no effect on focal length. But with the Nikon D3500, which has an APS-C sensor, the crop factor here is 1.5. 1 1.5 times 200 millimeters equals 300 millimeters. So this means even though the lens was set at 200 millimeters, the image was shot at the equivalent focal length of 300 millimeters. And with lenses, the bigger the number, the closer you can zoom, which explains why the subject is larger in our frame. For another example, let's consider a Canon T7, which has an APS-C sensor and a crop factor of 1.6. Add a telephoto lens, set the focal length to 300 millimeters, which is the maximum, and you are now shooting at 480 millimeters because of the crop factor. 1.6 times 300 equals 480. So for wildlife and sports photographers, the crop factor can actually be a good thing because cropping gets you closer to the subject. Bonus. Here's another example, the crop factor here working in my favour as the 300mm lens is effectively a 480mm lens, getting me even closer to my subject. To demonstrate how the crop factor affects wide angle lenses, I took an image with a Nikon Z6, followed by an image with a Nikon D3500. Now both shots were taken with the lens set to 18 millimeters, but as you can see with the full frame sensor of the Z6, we get to see the big picture. This is what the world looks like through a lens with a focal length of 18 millimeters. With the second image, however, we lose the wide field of view simply because of the crop factor. 18 millimeters is effectively now 27 millimeters, and we know this now because 18 times 1.5 equals 27. So now let's take a look at some of the pros as well as the cons of the crop factor. If you're a photographer that likes taking photos of building, architecture, landscapes, then you're probably gonna want a wide view. Unfortunately, the crop factor may be a disadvantage here because the crop factor may mean that that wide field of view is cropped and therefore a full frame camera would be a better choice. But if you're into taking photos of things that are further away, so again, wildlife and sports, the crop factor here can be an advantage because again, the bigger the number, the more cropped in your image will be and the closer the subject will appear in your photos. Now the size of the sensor will also affect the image quality and how well the camera performs in low light situations. Shooting in low light really shows off the capabilities of a full frame sensor. Now that's not to say you can't take good photos at night with a cropped sensor camera, as long as you know what you're doing. This image here taken with a Canon T7 1500D. Now a larger sensor does not necessarily mean more megapixels, but the larger sensor and subsequently larger pixels do mean more light can be recorded and a greater dynamic range and better ISO performance compared to cropped sensor cameras. Now, if you're using a cropped sensor camera like this Canon T7 with a telephoto lens, it's probably because you're taking photos of things that are further away. And as already discussed in this video, the crop factor is helping you get closer, which is a good thing. But there is also a disadvantage, camera shake. It's hard enough to hold a 300 millimeter lens like this steady because the lens exaggerates every hand movement that you make, but factoring the crop factor and effectively you're trying to hold a 480 millimeter lens steady. And this can be really difficult and can lead to blurry photos. So the crop factor exaggerates hand movements. Now there is a way around this. I've covered it in a separate video where I talk about telephoto lenses and focal length, and I definitely recommend you watching this next. I'll put a link up here, but also in the description below this video. If you're also a fan of blurry backgrounds, then a full frame camera may be a better option as the larger the sensor, the shallower the depth of field. The flip side of this, of course, is a smaller sensor gives a greater depth of field, which can be seen as an advantage. 
for landscape photographers. If you're thinking of buying a new camera or maybe upgrading, it certainly is worth taking into account the crop factor and the size of the sensor inside the camera and whether or not it suits your requirements and the type of photography you want to do. Now as grateful as I am for having a full frame camera like the Nikon Z6 which I'm using to record this video, there have been some times recently where I've wanted that extra reach that the crop sensor cameras give me. So a reminder that the crop factor has pros and cons. Buy the type of camera that suits your type of photography. With sensor sizes, big is not always gonna be better. It really does depend on you and your type of photography. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned a bit more about the crop factor. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing because I put out new videos every single week. And if you want to say hi, if you want to leave a comment or maybe suggest a future video, you can do so in the comment section down below. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.